Hi everyone, this is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service, here to provide you with an update. I uh, haven't spoke since before Thanksgiving. A return of precipitation to Southern California, but low impact. Doesn't look like a significant series of storms. Okay, here are the highlights. This is the third Pacific storm of the season, the rainy season, starting October 1st. But it's been dry since the last significant storm we had, November 8th. We've also had three Santa Ana wind events uh, with significant drying in November. The main weather maker is Thursday into Thursday night. Another weather system is expected late Sunday into Monday. This is an atmospheric river, but it's weakening when it reaches Southern California. Important to note that. Locally, one to two inches of rain in the San Gabriel San Bernardino mountain slopes, most areas under a quarter of an inch with some local or heavier rain in Orange County up to around a half inch. This is not a significant storm. Uh, rainfall rates show that as well. Most rainfall rates will be under 0 0.20 per hour, so largely light rain or briefly moderate. Snow levels also not significant, though we will see some snow, especially up around 7,000 feet. Okay. I mentioned the water year. It starts October 1st. It's been dry in central Northern California. The one storm we've had, the imprint is still showing in Southern California. Two to three times is what is average across our interior mountain areas. Temperatures also have been a little bit cooler than average, especially with cool nights. So it's been a slow start for central Northern California. The upcoming storm, beneficial. The storm comes in on Thursday. It's a fast mover as shown here. The red line just grazes us to the north. That's the storm track. That's the main energy jet stream. So uh, this is not going to allow the atmospheric river to gain strength or focus over our area. We'll get the leftovers. The pattern repeats itself. It's more broad and weaker on Sunday, but it does repeat itself across California. Uh, and tries to come down into Southern California, the red line that is. You can see the main energy is way to the east in central Canada, Hudson's Bay. Uh, so we don't uh, receive all that energy and it's a relatively weak storm late Sunday. I mentioned atmospheric river. It is an atmospheric river, which is transport of moisture, tropical moisture by wind. So when it comes into Santa Barbara, you can see the arrow pointing at it. Um, but it weakens um, and it doesn't strengthen. It weakens as it moves through Southern California because the storm exits quickly. So we just get the remainder of that. Our San Bernardino Mountains feels most of the precipitation. Another atmospheric river for Sunday, well, it's even smaller and it's more concentrated, narrower as it enters into Southern California. It's there. Uh, so there will be moisture transport into that next storm, but weak when it gets down to here. Okay, uh, the next seven days is looking great for beneficial rain, especially from L.A. northward, the Sierra Nevada mountains in particular. Looking a little bit closer, you can see several inches, three to four inches for the wet slopes of the Sierra Nevada. When you get down towards Southern California, it tapers off significantly, but... Uh, L.A. Basin, uh, a beneficial rainfall for sure, and at least some rain all the way down to San Diego. A zoomed up version shows the same thing. You can see the San Gabriels to the San Bernardinos, uh, where we expect one to locally two inches. Very concentrated, drops off quickly from L.A. to Orange County. So northern Orange County does the best locally around a half inch of rain. That's with the remnants and the weakening atmospheric river Thursday evening. Has a hard time bringing much rain though all the way down to the Mexico border. The winds, the winds are not particularly strong, but the wind prone areas, the mountain passes and desert slopes will be windy, gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour. So high profile vehicles are the main impact for the 15, 10 and eight corridors. Temperatures will be on the cool side, not cold, um, but you'll have that mixed rain and snow up around six, 7,000 feet. So temperatures when it's not precipitating around 40 at Big Bear and Wrightwood. 
Elsewhere, temperatures will barely get over 60, so it will feel cool, except for the deserts getting in the upper 60s. The next system on Sunday mentioned it being weaker, uh, lighter precipitation, faster moving, weaker atmospheric river. So the end result is much lighter precipitation. Most areas a tenth to a quarter inch of rain. Some areas no rain down near the Mexico border and some areas a little bit more rain in the favored San Gabriel areas. The weather pattern for mid-December doesn't change. Um, it doesn't show a lot of promise with the main jet stream staying across the Pacific Northwest. So uh, over the next several weeks, the outlook is calling for far northern California and the Pacific Northwest to be above average at and north of the red line, which is the jet stream. Also cooler than average temperatures, leaving us out of most of this in Southern California. We're currently in La Nina. Uh, La Nina is the cold phase of the ocean sea surface temperatures in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean as shown here. Uh, we have opposites going on where the central northern Pacific, due to the lack of storms over the past three years, is warmer, and in some cases much warmer than average, uh, where the water is not getting turned over. La Nina persists in an unusual fashion now of three straight years. Reminder of what El Nino is, it's just a natural occurrence in the tropics to relieve some of the warm water and replace it with cool water. In this case, the cycle is stuck in La Nina. It also can have influence on our jet stream, typically shifting it further north, making it more erratic or more extreme. Uh, so you don't necessarily have weaker storms, but you have less of them impacting the lower 48. We have not seen La Nina for three years in a row since 2001. So it is a little bit rare to have a La Nina, especially at this magnitude persisting this long three years in a row. Typically what we see with La Nina is drier than average, especially in Southern California as shown here, the signal strongest there. Wetter than average in the Pacific Northwest as an average, not a forecast, but an average. Temperature wise, we see a signal too of cooler than average in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies. And that typically can extend into California too. Uh, drier weather patterns, uh, clearer skies at times, longer breaks in precipitation can lead to some cool nights as well. The averages are also affected when you look at the triple La Nina years. Uh, those years like in the mid 70s, late 90s, uh, much cooler than average uh, when you look at those alone in Southern California. Slightly drier than average, a very weak signal. Um, typically, you average them together and some of them have been wet. Uh, to offset the really dry La Nina years. The official outlook, this gets updated once a month, continues to call for above average precipitation, rain, snow, Pacific Northwest, and below average for Southern California. Temperatures likely a toss up. The mountains will be warmer uh, due to the breaks in precipitation and being on the wrong side of the storm track, infrequent storm track. But some of the storms will be really cold, like we saw in November, and lead to cold nights, so it tends to offset. The relief to the drought conditions is highly uncertain, especially for Northern California. Uh, a lot of promise for far Northern California, and especially the Pacific Northwest, for a wet winter or above average precipitation. Make sure you tune in to weather.gov to check the latest alerts, which mean watches and warnings, and also to monitor the weather conditions. We have a link here where you can monitor the weather conditions for any location and even look at past data. All right, everyone, stay safe. Enjoy the little bit of rain that we do get here in Southern California.